What is up my dashing dudes? I am the Hans TV, and today we're bringing back an old subreddit for the channel that you guys really really love. It's r slash entitled parents. Our first post for the day comes from Brightside256. My entitled mother-in-law to be threw my family heirloom engagement ring down a storm drain. I have seen a lot of crazy people in my life, but my potential F mill is the absolute worst person I have ever met. I, 30 female, have been with my boyfriend, 31 male, for 8 months now. For the first few months, everything was amazing. He is the sweetest and most caring man I have ever been with. He likes to surprise me with fun dates and flowers for no apparent reason. The biggest surprise of all though, was when I met his mother. I met his parents for the first time a few months ago. The first thing F. Mill said to me when I walked to the door was, Are you Jewish? I am not, and I am not particularly religious, but I was raised Catholic. Once I told her this, it was the beginning of the madness. She immediately stopped talking to me and acted as if I didn't exist. I was extremely nervous about meeting my boyfriend's parents, so this broke my heart. I was determined to make a good impression, so I kept trying to connect with her. This was a huge mistake, and I should have just let it go. Once we were all seated for dinner, she finally decided to try and make conversation. I have naturally red hair, and she asked if my parents have the same color. I told her that I have the same hair as my mother. She then had the audacity to ask me, does the carpet match the drapes? I had no idea how to respond and just sat there stunned. Seeing my reaction, she said, don't worry, I will just ask my son about it later. I looked over at my boyfriend who seemed equally as shocked, but he didn't say anything. She then started to go on about my hair being too curly. She told me that I really need to learn how to run a brush through my hair and think about my appearance more when I'm with her son. Then, when I didn't eat much at dinner, she gave me her version of a compliment. I was told it was good that I'm watching what I eat because it would be a shame if I got any bigger. This was just my first meeting with this woman. As soon as I got into my car, I burst into tears until I got home. My boyfriend was texting me and apologizing for his mother's behavior, but the damage was done, and I told him I needed time to think. He went into apology overload after this and started sending flowers to my office every day and leaving me messages begging me to talk to him. I finally agreed and we went out to dinner. He told me he spoke with his mother about her inappropriate comments and she swore it would never happen again. With this reassurance, I decided to give it another chance. Fast forward two weeks to when he invited me to come to a family birthday party. This time I would also be meeting his sisters and his grandparents. His grandparents and sisters are awesome people. They asked me normal questions about my job, family, and friends. His mother seemed to be avoiding me throughout the evening and honestly, I was okay with that. I went to grab something from my purse and noticed that it was not where I left it. I looked everywhere but I could not find it. I went and asked my boyfriend and he began to help me look. He then got a strange look on his face and he quickly went upstairs. I could then hear a lot of yelling begin upstairs. He came back down holding my purse after a few minutes and told me that we were leaving. Once we got in the car, I asked him what was going on. His mother had taken my purse so that she could see my driver's license. She intended to try and run a background check on me. He told me she had told him this earlier, but honestly had thought she was joking. I thought that it was best if I avoided any of his family functions for the time being. This worked out great for a while and he went to any of his family parties alone. He would ask me each time before leaving if I was sure that I didn't want to go, but I always declined. Last week his family had their reunion, and he asked me to please come with him. I was very reluctant, but considering there would be so many people present, I didn't think she would pull anything. When we got there, everything was going great. I met his extended family and got to catch up with his sisters. His mother did seem to be shooting me death glares all night, but I brushed it off. Soon, she came over and joined a table I was seated at with his sisters and some cousins. The conversation was pleasant as we were talking about his sister's children. His sister has a daughter who is 12 and is the same age as my niece. I then showed his sister a picture of my niece on my phone. His mother took a look at the screen and began to laugh. She tells me she hopes that if me and her son ever have children, they don't look like my niece. My niece is beautiful by the way, and she is only 12 years old. 
What kind of monster attacks a 12 year old child's appearance? This was my breaking point, and I went off like a volcano. I started to scream at her, and told her she is the most evil person I have ever had the disadvantage to meet. I told her that if I ever did have children with her son, she could be certain that she will never meet them because hell is too far to travel to. I am not 100% certain exactly everything that I said, but from what his younger sister said, it was epic. She began to play the victim and well did I had just misunderstood her joke. My boyfriend came rushing over at this point and she threw herself into his arms telling him I am a horrible woman and he needed to throw me out right now. He told her that wasn't going to happen and to stop making a fool of herself. She seemed to accept this for a moment and sat back down. She just kept sobbing that I just didn't understand how to take a joke. Then something in her snapped as she noticed something that my boyfriend was holding in his hand and began to have another meltdown. I didn't understand what was happening at this point and just stood there watching a grown woman pitch a fit like a toddler. None of what she was saying made any sense to me as it was mostly just incoherent screaming, but I did pick up on many derogatory comments directed my way. My boyfriend told me we were leaving and told me to grab my things. As I started to get ready, F. Mill made a lunge for my boyfriend's hand and grabbed the small box he was holding. She then looked me dead in the eyes and said, you will never have this ring you little bitch. She ran outside and threw the box down a storm drain. Turns out that my boyfriend was intending on proposing to me. He had just obtained his grandmother's ring while we were at the reunion. His grandmother is completely heartbroken because now her ring is down a storm drain instead of continuing on in the family as she has always wanted. I don't know where to go from here. I am devastated, confused, and exhausted. Can I ask him to never see his mother again? Is that my place to say something like that? I'm sorry that my story is so long, but I really needed to get this rant off my chest. OP, if you ever see this, please just know that things will get better. Uh, you don't have to stay in that family even if you marry him. He can cut off ties with them and y'all can live happily ever after. Just keep strong and don't let what she's doing to you destroy you. Our next post for the day comes from Josie Vander. EM jokes about using my assault to get someone fired. So this was a year ago and the assault was in 2012. Sorry for any typos and such, wrote on phone. My mom has always been blunt and really harsh at times. Growing up, she used to make me feel extremely insecure about my body. I was very fit and say things like freak you or I hate you in regards to my body. So naturally, we didn't have the best relationship growing up. Backstory. In 2011, over the summer, I was sexually assaulted at my trailer park. Crap was horrible and I tried to ignore it. He worked for my stepdad up north, so the next summer, he was there again. He then spent the week I was there trying to ask for forgiveness, and I, like an idiot, forgave him since I convinced myself it wasn't sexual assault, ignored me asking him to stop. Well, at the end of the week was the beach party, and he spent the night trying to get me drunk. I was 16 and he was 25, and he gave me a shot that I am positive was drugged. He got me away from my friends and I blacked out. All I remember after that is being bent over, then running away crying. Long story short, my stepdad and mom found out a year later since my counselor told them, and my stepdad got him fired and was very supportive. My mom, on the other hand, told me to let it go. Charges were never laid, long story. This brings us to now. About a year ago, my mom, husband, and I were going out. Stepdad and her got divorced, and ironically both him and the assaulter had the same name. She was drunk, we were driving to the bar, and she was angry at my stepdad for some reason. She decided to make a joke saying, you know they don't know which blank it was, I can always just get him fired. My husband just stared at me in shock, and I kept my composure until we got there and she got out. I started bawling my eyes out and eventually told my mom that that was not okay to say. She brushed it off and got angry at me for getting mad at her and yelling. She has never apologized. I wish there was a happy ending to this story, but that's it. You know, I love my mom, but at the end of the day, if she ever pulled something like this, you can bet your ass that she would be out of my life faster. You don't make fun of somebody's assault, and you definitely don't do it right in front of them. Like, that's hella freaked up, guys. Our next post comes from Cerulean Tornado. I pay tuition. I work in a very small school in Los Angeles. Come on guys, I don't want to lose my job over a post if I get fined out. 
I have a dad at my school. He is the epitome of entitled. So many stories. But today, dad was dropping off his guppy in the carpool line. Every day he picks the 7th grade patrol kid he wants to help guppy out of the car, ignoring the carpool rules and all the other cars. Every day he is told to pull up so we can get cars off the public street and into our lot. Today a 7th grade patrol waved him forward. He rolled down the window and yelled at the kids for waving too aggressively, then called the vice president about how rude the kid was for gesturing for him to pull forward 7 to 8 spots. The vice president said we need to get people's cars off the main road so as not to inconvenience the neighbors slash block traffic. Dad screamed at vice president because he pays tuition and other people's problems aren't his and he'll drop Guppy off with whomever he wants to. He blocks traffic, puts others at risk, screams at children, all because he pays tuition. Like every other parent. At least the admin knows the parents are special, so when they get the ranting emails about the awfulness of the teacher, they are mostly ignored. I might be that teacher, and I might be glad dad screamed at vice president today. Our final post for the day comes from Suhazdas? Suhazdas? That name. Entitled family steals food from my pantry. This happened two days ago, so I'm still fuming. But one thing you should know is that I run a food pantry on the weekends. We are led by seven teenagers, one of them being me, who are in charge of seven different teams that cook, pack, and deliver about 4,000 pounds of food and goods to about 350 needy people every single week. I love running this pantry, and I sacrifice my weekends and social life. I literally haven't hung out with anyone in months, but that's okay because I want to support my community. Now for the story. It's not going to be in the normal format because there's barely any dialogue. So our pantry works where each family has a code that describes the zone they're in and the size of their family. And every week we have a new list of codes because things are constantly being rezoned due to families getting jobs and losing jobs all the time. So last Sunday we really messed up and we used the wrong list with the wrong codes. But it wasn't a big deal because I made an announcement over the mic that if any runner, once the meals are made, we give it to teens to go run them and place them in their corresponding boxes. Each family has a box had a code that didn't exist to bring it back to me or leave it in a nearby box and the team leaders will come fix it. A lot of people brought back their meals and I relabeled them and apologized that we used the wrong list by accident and it seemed to be going well until I started fixing the list so we don't use the wrong one again. That's when I realized that I never got the meals for P5 back. P5 was supposed to be T2. My first thought was, oh. Maybe they left them in a nearby box and we missed it. So I sent someone to go through every box and check, and they never found it. So then my next thought was, oh, they might have left it in the storage shed. So I go out there and I lock eyes with a few teens and their mom, who for some reason panic and run to their car and drive off. I didn't realize it this time, so I'm like, okay, then nice to see you too. I check the storage cart and it's not there. I then check T2 to see if someone else just relabeled it, but it wasn't there. Then it hits me. The teen I gave P5 to just said, Hey, my box doesn't exist, so instead of going back and getting it relabeled like everyone else, I'm just going to go home with all this food. And just stole a family's worth of food from a food pantry. And I realized that's why the family ran. Luckily, we had enough food to give to T2, but I had to use our extra food, which I always give to family C4, who I know is an unemployed single mother with six kids. So because these teens decided they wanted to be cool by stealing food from a food pantry, C4 couldn't get the extra food they usually get. Honestly, I'm just in shock. I knew people did bad things, but I didn't think anyone would stoop so low to steal from a charitable food pantry that gives meals to people that wouldn't otherwise have any. It makes me question why I do it, and whether I should continue being a leader in the pantry. I'm trying to give back to the community, and the community steals and screws each other over. Well, alright my dashing dudes, I believe that that is enough for r slash entitled parents today. If you like the stories, I'll link them down in the description as always. And if you like the video, feel free to subscribe, drop a like, and a comment down below with what you'd like to see me read next. A huge thank you to all of my subscribers. We're so close to hitting 100. If you're watching this and you haven't subscribed and you liked what I did, please go ahead and hit that subscribe icon because I'm doing this for you guys and I really want to put out more and more content for you. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video.